Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered, is it possible that there's life out there somewhere? Or are we alone? These sorts of questions have been compelling to me since I was a child, and propelled by those childhood curiosities, I'm still interested in answering them today. Only now the questions I ask are a bit more specific, and I do my best to actually answer them. Now I'm asking, is it possible that there was once warm temperatures and abundant liquid water on Mars, like there is on Earth? And is it possible that life could have ever formed there? To answer these questions, I use a combination of observations of surface geologic features and advanced numerical models to better understand what the climate was like on Mars during a very interesting part of its history, around three and a half billion years ago. If you're thinking, wow, that's a really long time ago. Wait a minute, do we even know much about what our own planet Earth was like at that time? Great question, and the answer is no. <laughs> In this image, all areas of the Earth that have been preserved for more than two and a half billion years are shaded in orange. And as you can see, they're quite minimal. You see, one of the ways that we learn about what a planet used to be like is by analyzing parts of the surface that have been preserved since that time. So the reason that we don't know much about what Earth was like billions of years ago is because Earth has abundant geologic processes that are acting to continuously reshape the surface, and as a result, there aren't many regions on the surface of the Earth that have been preserved for billions of years. Unlike the Earth, however, there are many regions on the surface of the Mars that have been preserved for billions of years. And the geologic features on these really old terrains can tell us a lot of exciting stuff about the, pl the planet used to be like. And even though Mars is nothing like Earth today, the geology suggests that the planet may have underwent intense climate change, and actually it may have once been quite Earth-like. For example, there are dried rivers and lakes on these old terrains, which suggests that there was liquid water on the surface of the planet billions of years ago. And liquid water is one of the key requirements for life. And this is super exciting, of course, as we move forward with studies that are searching for life elsewhere, but actually it doesn't tell us much about the habitability of the planet or what the climate was like at that time. The reason for that is because there are rivers on Earth that form through the influence of abundant rainfall in the near tropical regions, but there are also rivers that form from the seasonal melting of snow and ice in the cold, barren deserts of Antarctica. So, sure, there was liquid water. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it was very warm or habitable in the way we typically think of the environments on Earth where life really flourishes anyway. So if we want to know more about whether Mars was ever habitable and Earth-like, we actually have to know a lot more about the climate. And I analyze other geologic features to do this. Specifically, there's geologic evidence that there may have once been oceans in the topographically lowest parts of the northern hemisphere of Mars. And that geologic evidence includes potential shorelines and tsunami deposits. And these oceans could have grown to cover the entire northern hemisphere of Mars. So what can we learn about the climate from the signature of this ocean? We can actually learn quite a bit. This is because the formation of this ocean requires very strict climate conditions. Let me explain. This ocean was likely sourced from groundwater. Groundwater is typically trapped beneath the surface of a planet, but can be released to the surface if the conditions are just right. Specifically, the local temperature has to be above freezing. If it's below freezing, the ground will freeze, and that will trap the groundwater in the subsurface, preventing the release of that water to the surface and the formation of this ocean. Since we know the local climate conditions required for formation of this ocean, and the location at which the ocean formed, we can use advanced models to extrapolate and paint the picture of what the climate looked like on the rest of the planet when this ocean was in the Northern Hemisphere. And that's what I've been doing in my most recent research. I use a combination of a one-dimensional thermal model and a three-dimensional climate model to better understand the characteristics of the global climate when this ocean was on the surface. So the question that I'm asking is, if you were on the surface of Mars billions of years ago, would you have been relaxing in a beach chair in a bathing suit like we would on the Caribbean beaches, which of course may be what we want to assume, or would you have been observing half-frozen waves splashing into icy shores like in Antarctica? Simply put, 
my research finds that the local conditions required for the formation of this ocean could have persisted in the northern hemisphere of Mars even if the average global temperature was 20 degrees below freezing. And that's the average temperature in Antarctica. So maybe it wasn't beach balls and bathing suits, and we should start to think of Mars as a place with very cold oceans, and if life ever did form there, maybe it would have had to have been extremophiles, which are organisms capable of living in very harsh conditions. And as we move forward with studies that combine observations of surface geology and our understanding of planetary climate, we're starting to learn a lot more about what young Mars used to be like. And this is critically important because we're able to answer those compelling questions, such as, is it possible that life once formed on Mars? Thank you.